To be honest with you, I really didn't want to make this video. I didn't. I said I wouldn't cover this game, and, well, I didn't buy this game, I can tell you that. <laughs> I was never going to waste $60 on this fucking shit. But, that being said, I did want to make this video to, you know, correct a few mistakes I made in my first video. And just, just, you know, break it down, the details of how fucking terrible the plot is in this game. I mean, God, I can't believe this. Neil Druckmann is a fucking joke, dude. He is such a joke that he thought this was good. You know, how could anyone take a look at this game? At its story, its characters, and be like, yeah, you know, that's that's a product we can release to the masses. This is something people will enjoy. Sony wants money. They need millions of copies sold to justify this very expensive movie with repetitive gameplay sequences in between. They need this to sell millions. Like, they are coming dangerously close to modern Square Enix where they spend millions on these fancy cutscenes and graphics and shit and they need an insane amount of copies sold to justify the money made or the money spent on the game. Yeah, they, they've pretty much hit that point. Which is more or less rock bottom. That's the point where you start disappointing everybody because you don't even understand what your audience wants. But that being said, enough enough foreplay. Let's let's just get straight into this. Alright, so first off with corrections. Abby isn't trans. You know, that she's she's not trans. That being said, her character design, like Jesus Christ, the people who modeled her character need to fucking go back and take another anatomy class or some shit. Though I, I suspect this was highly intentional anyway. And before all of you fucking <laughs> SJWs say something, oh, uh, have you ever seen a bodybuilder woman before? First of all, you haven't seen a bodybuilder woman. I'm gonna show you some fucking bodybuilders, Olympic athletes, Ronda Rousey, who I, I'm pretty sure Abby was based off of. None of them have Abby's body type. Because women do not have arms as large as their legs. Okay? Maybe she skipped, like, a thousand leg days in those four years. Which, l let's just talk about four years for a second. Four years is not enough for a woman to gain that much muscle mass in her arms. Like, especially in an apocalypse. Are you kidding me? What protein source is she getting? Are they injecting protein powder into the wolves, Washington Liberation Front, whatever the fuck, injecting it into their food? Do they have, like, fucking supplements? Do they have HGH, steroids? What the fuck? Like, no. Women do not look like this. So, again, you fucking idiot women who literally don't even know what you're talking about and cucked men, or whoever the fuck is saying this shit. No. Women don't look like this. Just look at these pictures, okay? That's what muscular women look like. Alright, but moving on. Okay, so she's not trans, she's just insanely jacked and just disgusting. Utterly disgusting looking. Okay, so there's that. But there is a trans character in this game, and we'll, we'll get to that later. And that's, in some ways, actually worse than, than Abby. But, whatever. Uh, the other major correction that I'll accept is that the Seraphites aren't really a allegory for Christianity as far as I can tell. Because honestly, they aren't even fleshed out enough to be allegory for anything. You know? Like, they're more like uh, evil Amish than anything. I mean, they, they represent conservative values and how evil they are so you could stretch that to mean christianity but really it's more like just like uh conservative values bad uh you know new shit good liberals good you know it's like so okay whatever same shit really so that's that's pretty much it i mean i don't know any other mistakes i made in the original uh, were pretty minor also i do want to say really quick that uh I purposely didn't talk about, this is full spoiler video, if, if that's not clear, this is a full spoiler video. 
So I didn't talk about Joel dying and like the ending and stuff on purpose, which are definitely probably the worst part of the game. Because I wanted to do a spoiler free review just in case. I don't want to be a dickhead and just be like, you know, people who saw that video still bought the game. Then again, the people downvoted only watched maybe 30 seconds tops of the video, which I have the analytics. That's not me pulling it out of my ass. So, you know, typical YouTube fashion. People just downvote before even watching. But, um, <clears throat> I just want to uh, basically skim through the plot. And let's just talk about how shitty this is, okay? Because it's fucking horrible. It is, it is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> let's begin. Oh, yeah, and I want to make something clear, too, that I forgot to mention in the first video. Neil Druckmann is friends with Anita Sarkeesian. Okay, if that doesn't, if that's not a red flag to you, well, again, you probably didn't make it this far. You probably already downloaded the video and clicked off. But, for everyone else, you know how fucking bad that is. Like, that's a name people don't talk about anymore, because she's really not relevant. But, that's a red flag if I've ever seen one. Anyway, it begins in the town of Jackson, or whatever. The gang has settled, I suppose, after the events of the first game. And just to go through a few of the game's priorities, uh, the bisexual love triangle is introduced in the first 20 minutes. Though calling it a love triangle is kind of a stretch, because Jesse is basically just the cuck. He, he's like, oh, n nah, man, uh, Ellie, uh, I'm okay with all that shit, alright? You know, I, I don't care about Dina, but, you know, you and me are still cool. You know, you can... <laughs> uh... He doesn't know, at that point, of course, that Dina is pregnant with his child, but that just really furthers, like, the cucking later on. And, God, he just... Every man in this game, every major male character gets fucking destroyed. It, it just... Ev <laughs> they get abused so hard, or just, like, pathetic in some way. And you'll quickly notice the amount of women who are in positions of power or are major characters in this. Like, if you're paying any amount of attention, because it's essentially almost all of them. Uh, <clears throat> the word bigot is used in the first 20 minutes, because of course it's a random old man. 25 years after the apocalypse, let, let me remind you, and they care about fucking who's gay for some reason. Who gives a shit? Uh, see, oh yeah, another thing about Abby. Look, there's, there's flat women, okay, I get it. We don't have breasts. Abby's not flat though. Her breasts are literally shaped like pecs. It is disgusting. She's utterly disgusting. I don't care what you say. You know, you can call me like a vain misogynist, like shallow type of person. She is hard to look at. Her arms are so fucking distracting, man. It, like every minute she's on screen. But like, it switches to her perspective in what, the first 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Oh, yeah, I probably should say, uh, I watched Shiraco's playthrough of this, of course, because there was no way I was going to play this game. That was never going to happen, you know. So I watched his full play playthrough, which was incredibly painful, by the way. So I'm, I'm doing this for you guys, just because Jesus Christ, man, I just, I feel dead inside after watching that whole thing. This game will make you depressed by the end, I guarantee it. Uh, Shiraco sucks at the game, and it, but it really doesn't matter, because... I'm barely going to talk about the gameplay anyway. The gameplay is almost identical to the first game. If you like the first game's gameplay, you'll probably like this, but if you expected some innovation, as far as I can tell, based on my seven-year-old memory at this point, uh, they didn't really add that much. It's mostly the same. They nerfed clickers because uh, apparently uh, Ellie's switchblade is indestructible for some reason. Whatever, you know. So much for crafting shanks. But yeah, back to the plot shit. Um, one, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fucking fist fighting zombies in this game. I don't know if that, that seems really stupid to me. It's like literally you get bitten. Hell, I think if you even get scratched, you get infected. And I understand this is part of like Ludo narrative dissonance, which. It's kind of, you know, it's a pretentious term, but the point is, is like, you can only separate gameplay and story so far before or you start asking questions, especially when your game is very realistic. And this is an example where it's like, another thing people do a lot is like literally choking out zombies with 
at, like the she beast and her giant fucking man meat arms. Like, how easy would it be for like you to um, slip up and not quite choke out? Well, you basically you choke them out and then snap their necks, right? You get them into position. But how easy would it be to just fucking grab around them a little too high? They bite you. You're infected. Game over. It's like it just doesn't make sense logically to do that. But anyway, this is the beginning of the game. Desperately wanting you to like Abby, of course. You play as her that early, but not for long. There's a lot of fucking. This game is so fucking slow paced. Get ready for like so many unnecessary scenes, dialogue, gameplay sequences that are literally like a fucking snail's pace, man. Like not. And I'm not even counting the actual combat sequences. Like, the combat sequences with stealth, that's fine, that's the game's normal pacing. But literally, in between, it's, it feels so fucking slow. Maybe because the writing has taken a nosedive, it feels longer. And there's a lot more sequences in this one, where you're by yourself. The interaction between Ellie and Joel in the first one kept things entertaining, to a degree. In this, none of the characters have nearly that much charisma. Like, even Ellie is like, she's just fucking deadpan the whole fucking time. She's just so much more boring. So much more boring in this one. Yeah, so, I don't know. There's like a lot of cringy, like, lovey-dovey dialogue type of stuff. This lesbian, like, this ideal, this idealized lesbian love situation you're gonna get a whole lot of that shit it's not it's cringy man it's i don't know it could be worse i guess but it, it's depending on how you tolerate that that can make the game even worse they find a fucking weed farm man like how much of this is literally just like liberal fantasizing like they they literally find a weed farm smoke some weed uh, Ellie and Dina have sex then, or whatever, for the first time. And then, this like a fucking, fucking sitcom. Jesse, the Asian dude getting cucked, you know, he walks in. And he's like, oh man, you guys just had sex, even though, you know, I just broke up with Dina and shit. And it's like, really man? Really? He just ha so happened to find them. Like, they're still in their underwear, and like, god damn it, dude, this is literally... It's, that's like some romantic comedy, shitty fucking... Get used to that. Get used to that in this game. Get used to that. Oh, but one thing I did find funny in that scene is that they struggled to open a jar. How, how very stereotypical. <laughs> this game has a lot of unintentionally funny moments. It's, it's the first of many. Oh yeah, you know, another thing that's weird, right? So when we switch back to Abby's perspective... There's like a flood of infected. They're supposed to have been clearing out these areas, and we learn later on that infected wander a lot, I guess. Sure, why not? I guess they're they're more like animals than the living dead in, in this universe. So I suppose that's believable. But there's still like a thousand... There's literally like a thousand of them. And then what gets really fucking stupid... This is like the beginning of the really shitty, convenient writing in this game. Is that Tommy gives out... Joel and his name like right after meeting Abby it's like in the first game Joel straight up runs over a an injured man in the street doesn't give out his name to like the the two the the black brothers that you meet like what like halfway through the game or something he never gave out that shit and I imagine Tommy's much the same because they're fucking survivors of this horrid apocalypse situation. But they're like, oh, well, the plot has to advance and we have to have our shock value moment in 30 minutes. So, uh, uh yeah, uh, I I'm Tommy, he's Joel. It's like, really? Come the fuck on. You couldn't come up with something more organic than that. <sighs> so, let's fast forward. So, of course, Jesse showed up because... They could, you know, Joel's been missing. Joel and Tommy have been missing. So Ellie, of course, is the one who ends up finding, like, this big mansion where all the dudes are. We have our infamous golf scene. And Ab Abby beats the living shit out of, like, I'll, I'll give him some credit. At least it's not like a one-on-one, -on -one, like, she-beast dominates a man situation. No, instead, Abby basically kneecaps him with a shotgun and then beats the shit out of him with a golf club. God, it's fucking brutal, man. Joel deserved better than this, really. I mean, everybody said it already, you know, I can't. 
Obviously, I feel the same way as everybody else. It is, it is fucking disrespectful. And here's the thing, too. This is something you'll notice. So there's this guy named Manny. He's, like, Hispanic or whatever. And he is Neil Druckmann's self-insert, without a doubt. He is Neil Druckmann's self-insert character. I will. Here's a side-by-side -side of what they look like. You can't tell me. That's not Neil Druckmann wanting to put himself in the game. And he's the one who spits on Joel's corpse in the scene. It's like, Jesus, man. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, clearly... See, because Neil Druckmann was the director of the first game, and I guess maybe someone was keeping him on a leash back then. Because, you know, the first game is a lot more, you know, relatable and not as insane. But, god damn, he must have... He must have thought the player base was supposed to hate Joel by the end of the game. Even though realistically, see, he's another one of these leftist, childless weirdos. There's so many of these childless weirdos, dude. It is, it's fucking weird. I can't even say I necessarily want children, but to be like that weirdo, like, you know, like the, the cat moms or dog mom type people, you know, that's essentially what they are, where they have, they pretend their pets are children because they can't have the real responsibility of children. They have all these fucking ethical justifications. That's what Neil Druckmann reminds me of, you know. Among other things. He also reminds me of those male feminist <laughs> And it's only a matter of time before he gets uh, me tooed. Uh, anyway. The scene is just brutal. I mean, it speaks for itself. I'll, I'll show some of that on screen, I'm sure. So, they leave Ellie alive just for plot reasons. Because literally... Anyone who survived this long in the apocalypse would never leave somebody alive. But, you know, you have to have a plot. Of course you have to have a plot, so Ellie gets left alive so she can have her big revenge story. Um, Tommy ends up going off on his own to go hunt down Joel's killers. Oh yeah, Tommy gets left alive too, of course. So, of course, Ellie and Dina chase after him. And that's where the big journey begins. Let's, flat, let's fast forward a bit, I guess, again. Because really not... There's so much fluff... These are just one of those fluff segments where literally there's like maybe a two to three hour gameplay segment that really should be like half an hour at the most before the next cutscene. We find out that in Seattle, where they've traveled to, the the Wolves, the Washington Liberation Front, whatever, you know, they somehow defeated the military in the quarantine zone. It never really explained, maybe in notes that I, I, I didn't give a shit about reading, but it's never explained in the story how the hell that happened especially they're so organized and there's so many of them they basically are the military but you know don't expect an explanation for that because that really doesn't matter of course you know the universe and the history doesn't matter at all just fucking pay attention to like the angry lesbian story in front of you but anyway oh yeah there is a part this is just kind of like filler dialogue dina apparently her fur the first time she killed a man was at 10 years old with a knife. What the fuck? That is not believable in any fucking way. Like, this is... You get, you notice these little asides. Like, these little subtle... Maybe not so subtle. Subtle to some of you. Not to me. Like, female empowerment type moments. Where it's supposed to... You could argue, oh, it's just supposed to show how brutal the world is. No. No, absolutely not. Even a 10-year-old boy stabbing a person to death it would still be unusual to say the least not unbelievable necessarily but definitely questionable but there's like th they literally it's a scene where like dina almost tries to like cuck ellie in a sense where like it tries to out alpha stacy her <laughs> in a way <laughs> if you'll forgive my <laughs> terminology there oh yeah so this this is where Neil Druckmann fucking loses his goddamn mind. So, they they find a synagogue in Seattle, right? And so, of course, Dina the Big Schnoz herself, you know, the beak, if you will. She is Jewish, playing directly, like, straight to stereotypes. Yeah, give her a giant nose. <laughs> I feel like that's unintentionally racist, but whatever. The, anyway... <laughs> She explains the culture of Judaism. Like, literally, the game literally takes you aside and is like, you know, would you like to hear about our Lord and Savior? You know, it's like, Yahweh? 
Oh my god. I can't fucking... Like, Neil Druckmann is Jewish, of course. I'm not going to make any statements that will get me in trouble with YouTube, but I, I just want to point this out. You know, I just want to point out this scene. And you can come to your own conclusions. So moving on. Oh, man. So we find out Dina's pregnant with Jesse's child. So this is really, like, the first big step of, like, cucking every man in this game, essentially, one way or another. Uh, because Dina, of course, wants to be with Ellie, so Ellie will raise... I, I guess Ellie raising another man's child is kind of cucking her, too, isn't it? But either way, I'm sure Jesse would want to be a part of his uh, son's life, so... Fuck, man. So Jesse, of course, followed them there, because he needs to be in the story to die. Because every man in this game exists to die, or to be horribly maimed, or to just look like a bad guy in some way, as you'll notice. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have to ask you guys, how high on the progressive stack do you think Bisexual Jew is? It's probably pretty high up there, don't you think? Yeah, it probably. Okay, so eventually they go to this hospital, you know, as Ellie's tracking down all these people and killing one by one the group that, um, killed Joel. There's this huge-ass hospital, which apparently was ground zero for, um, the outbreak in Seattle. And the, the wolves are set up there, but they've, like, quarantined, like, a huge section of the hospital off because there's, like, a bunch of infected, I guess. But... Like, considering how massive the wolves are, as we'll later see, you're telling me that they set up in this hospital, like, with barely any separation between them and the zombies, as, as we'll soon see, because every floor in the world of The Last of Us will be destroyed, like, just by, like, slamming shit into it. Like, all the infrastructure is just, like, rotted to shit in 25 years. There's not a single structure you can safely stand in without falling through the floor but they I, man i i can't even i can't even break this down i don't even want to break this down like a mauler style thing i just wanted to ramble about this shitty game i can't even fucking bring myself to do it it's just so depressing man like okay so throughout the game we get a bunch of flashbacks to um basically a younger ellie and joel and those are the best parts of the game really i mean they, they're very sad, though, because, of course, they have to happen after Joel's already fucking dead. So, it, it just, it makes you feel like shit, and it, it pisses you off. Because, of course, they killed Joel for shock value. Purely just for shock value. <sighs> God, it's so fucking frustrating, because the writing in those flashbacks is much better than, like, literally anything else. At least the dialogue is. So, it's just... God, it's horrible. It literally could have been a heartwarming moment if Joel was alive. Instead, you're just sad the whole game. Which, you're gonna be sad the entire game about various things. Because, here's another thing, too. This game loves you killing dogs. In fact, they build up. What happens... This is kind of skipping forward. But there's a dog that Ellie kills, right? And you find out later when you play Zabby, that was like their their unit's dog, like, that they all loved and pet, and then you play fetch with the dog, and it's like, Jesus Christ, what was wrong with... The people who wrote this were fucking psychopaths, man, or sociopaths, because how can you fucking do that, where it's like, oh yeah, this dog gets brutally stabbed to death, but oh, you know, it, it, in an hour from now, you'll be playing fetch with it and petting it and loving it, and everyone loves the dog and takes care of the dog and it helps you, and it's like, jeez... No, no, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? So there's a scene in the hospital where Ellie, like, is tracking down um, Nora, one of Abby's friends, and she gets, like, infected by spores when, like, the floor collapses. And, like, there's a scene, they don't even show it, though, which, like, they pussy out, you know? If you want your game to be really that brutal, you gotta show the torture scenes. That's just what I think. But basically, they imply that, well, they, more than imply, they just don't show you the scene where Ellie beats the living shit out of Nora to get info where Abby is. And she eventually actually gets the information, which is the, what, you know, implies how horrible she is now. How evil she is in her quest for revenge. And um, we get a scene where Joel finally tells the truth of the events of the first game. 
Which again, in a better game, would be an excellent scene. But in this game, it's like, does it even matter anymore? He's dead. Why do we... It's supposed to show, like, Ellie regrets having, like, ha having her hate boner for Joel for, like, so long. Um, because she never even made up with him for that whole situation by the time he dies. And so that's supposed to be part of her regrets or whatever. So, that basically, Ellie goes to this aquarium, right? Where Owen, Abby's lover, is. And, uh... Basically, Mel, the girl he's actually supposed to be with, who's pregnant, and Ellie, despite being a fucking, this is where the dog, this is where the dog gets stabbed to death, by the way. So that the brutal, it's fucking brutal. But um, right after that is when, despite she's a complete moron and like every fucking shitty movie, lets the two unarmed people approach the guy, the person with the gun, instead of just shooting them. But she still brutally murders this heavily pregnant woman and and this this cuck <laughs> and uh that's and oh yeah and remember this she leaves behind her map that she's been marking the whole game very important very important piece of shitty writing right there that comes up later so they lost all leads can't really find abby so they decide to just chill in the theater and of course the next day abby's just there brutally fucking murders Jesse, like, immediately. Just puts a bullet in his brain with no fanfare. No dramatic tension. Like, literally just like, boom, he's dead. Boom, he's dead. He's gone. He wasn't important. He was a man. Right. So, next. Now we finally play as Abby, and god damn, it's dragged out. I know I didn't play it, I only watched it, but holy shit, it just seemed so slow-paced. And the problem with this, the problem with this, like, I admire the attempt to make you try and sympathize or empathize with the villain of the game. But it, there was no chance for Abby. She's a fucking psycho. Not only is she a psycho, even if she's a justified psycho, which I believe she is justified to some degree, even if they had to, like, make the brutal killings at the end of the first game even more, kind of, like, brutal and personal. <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, like, getting to see, like, her goofy dad before he dies and stuff. It's like, it's still not enough. Like, you killed the main character of the first game. We're never going to sympathize with you. Nobody would. Nobody can. Like, everyone loved Joel. He was the best character in the first game easily. He was the reason people played the game. He was unique for being a character who chose his own selfish needs over like the good of the world you know and like that's very respectable and actually realistic and that's that's very admirable i love that it was a great writing but we were supposed to hate him i guess which is what neil Druckmann was i guess implying with this game but it was never gonna happen dude you spend literally half the game with abby meet all her group you know, like, see their dynamic. I mean, she's not a very likable character anyway. She's kind of a cunt. But, regardless, even taking that away, it was, it's impossible. It's impossible. Even if she's justified, you realize she's justified. She's not, like, super evil or anything. We're never gonna like her. We're never gonna like her. She, even, again, like, if you take away my shallow, like, male gaze, if you will, that I think she's fucking horrific looking, ugly, and unrealistic, and might as well be trans. I was never gonna relate to her, ever. And it's, you spend so long with her. So long. I, I will, I'm gonna skim through this, because it really doesn't matter. If you played to this point in the game, this is the point where the game will lose you forever if you weren't already lost. So, it really, it doesn't even matter what happens. Basically, we get to see the WLF. We get to see their pristine gym, which is supposed to be the justification for how Abby's so swole. Abby has, like, such ridiculous He-Man strength in this, too, that just, like, it makes it... It seems so insecure, you know? Even though this was, game was directed by a man, so it's not really, like... It comes, maybe he has a muscle girl fetish and an ugly girl fetish or something. I don't know. Who knows the mind of Neil Druckmann, right? But 
I don't know, dude. It still, like, there had to be some women in the writer's room who had, like, that kind of, like, you know, penis envy type of shit. Where it's like, she has to prove how strong she is every other scene. It's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's really cringy, dude. Uh, also, Shiraco's chat made a lot of, like, Abby Hulk memes. I, I really appreciate those. And the, of course, the, it's ma'am, you know, scene that you guys all know very well. They, oh, they find these Seraphites who, these, this brother and sister, or actually, okay. So here we go. Here's the trans character. So two of the Seraphites left their cult and they're sisters, but not really. Because as we find out, it's sister and brother. The brother is actually a woman, a female to male trans character, which I wouldn't have guessed. It's a lot more rare than the other way around. But yes, this this is horrible. Hey, here's why this is horrible. We find out she's 13 years old, and she decided at 13 years old, possibly even younger, that she she's a boy. She was born in the wrong body or something. And it's like, really? In a fucking, like, conservative Amish, like, cult, you're like, oh, I, I was born in the wrong body, Ooh. You know, and and another thing too, like they they really enforce like the anti-conservative shit, is they say, so her sister got to be a warrior, right? And Lev, also Lev is such a trans name too. Like, really, are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, so Lev also wanted to be a warrior, but it's tradition. They don't even explain the tradition, by the way, that she would be a wife to somebody. Well, why is the first daughter a warrior and the second daughter a wife? That doesn't make any sense. Like, they didn't explain it. Like, maybe there there's a note. But again, who gives a fuck about notes? Explain it in the story. And every character makes sure to call Lev he. Every single character. Never a moment of question. Like, yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Even though he has a girl's voice. Yeah, alright. Whatever. Oh yeah, oh my god. There's this point, right? So, every one of you knows about the infamous sex scene between Abby and Owen. And, oh my god, man. Oh my god. Dude, it's it's just disgusting. It is the worst. This is what you people, you people who wanted sex in video games, and I'm not talking about porn games, because it's obviously a different type of game. But you people who actually wanted sex in video games, like in Mass Effect. I remember in the Mass Effect days, people were like, oh, that's not really a sex scene. I want a sex scene. Do you really want your action figures to get smacked together? I know I don't. Like, I'll just go to a fucking Pornhub or something if I want to see that shit, right? No. Like, this is disgusting. It is disgusting. And you you only see them pound at it for, you know, like 10 seconds. I still feel like I need eye bleach after it. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. Ugh. And they, they bring in fucking drama, dude. They oh yeah, you want to talk about self-inserts. There are these, like, superhero cards, very diverse superhero cards that Ellie collects, right? The the, the person who's, like, I don't know if he owns the Avengers team or is, like, the, the doctor created most of them or something, but he's called Dr. Uckman. <laughs> Uckman. Druckman. Yeah, okay. Real subtle. Real subtle. Fucking hell, man. There's, like, love triangle shit. There's another love triangle thing. This one's actually a real love triangle. Or like, since Abby's like the illegitimate lover or whatever of of uh, Owen, Mel is all jelly because Mel is like super pregnant and shit. And so she's like, wow, Abby, you're a real piece of shit. And Abby could have just fucking decked her ass and like just say, I have expected that. God, this game just makes you feel like shit. Like the whole fucking time, dude. You, there's never a moment where you feel good except for maybe the flashbacks. And even then, then you're just sad because Joel's dead. So they have to go back to the island because Lev wants to convince his mother to come with them, but she's like super traditional. And so it turns out she actually tried to kill him. And so he kills her by accident. It's really sad actually kind of, but god, it feels it's just horrible. It's another horrible thing. And so it turns out the wolves were attacking the island to kill all the seraphites, right? And so their leader, Isaac, this black guy, and he's like the only man 
in charge of an organization in this game. Like, every other settlement, anything, group, whatever, is led by a female, except him. And he dies, by the way, of course. And, uh, <laughs> of course he does. And so, Yara, which is Alev's sister, you know, she had to have her arm chopped off, by the way. Not that important, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, she gets killed, uh, but she kills Isaac. Then they run away from, like, the burning village and shit. Uh, <laughs> there's a communist, f uh, weapon fight to the do to the death. Basically... <laughs> There's this huge black guy with with a hand uh, with a <laughs> with a sledgehammer, and Abby has a sickle. <laughs> oh man, uh, Shiraco's stream comments. You you guys were funny. I got I got to give you credit. Uh, um, so after the Kami fight, and the dude gets his fucking face shredded, man. Like this game is gory in like a really weird way, like in an uncomfortable way. He looks like a fucking zombie by the end of it. But of course, you know Abby fucking She-Hulk survives. He-Man. All that shit. Uh, she returns to the aquarium. That's when Owen and Mel get killed by Ellie. The conveniently left behind map helps her find that uh, the theater. She That's when she kills Jesse. Shoots Tommy in the eye and he survives. Actually, surprisingly. The one man who survives in this game. Uh, beats there's this huge fight you're playing as Abby killing Ellie it's kind of an interesting boss fight conceptually but I feel like if you're playing you just want to lose that boss fight like you want to die on purpose every time because you don't want to kill Ellie but whatever fuck man it's just unbelievable too like with how jacked Abby is like it would be like one punch and Ellie's down like but that you could ask that question of like the whole fucking game Ellie's like this little string bean, little fucking emaciated 120 pound woman who takes out, you know, 180 to 200 pound men on the regular. But whatever, you know, a Abby wins, but doesn't kill Ellie for no fucking reason. Gives her another chance at life. She guess it was supposed to be a big message or some shit. So fast forward again, uh, Ellie and Dina are like chilling in the country in this very picturesque, like, utopian little country house with Jesse's kid they're raising him and shit and Ellie's having nightmares of Joel and so she can't let go she has to go find Abby and kill her and you know Dina, Dina of course doesn't want her to leave Tommy you know this is when we find out Tommy's alive he's still obsessed with wanting to get Joel killed but in his condition he knows he can't get the or getting to kill Abby in his condition he still can't get the job done he can't get the job done anymore. So, what you you have one last journey. Abby thinks that she found some other fireflies, finally. Of course, there are no other fireflies, and it's like these slavers who intercepted the signal. They capture her and Lev. Then you play as Ellie, kill, like, all the slavers, of course. Superwoman, of course. Uh, f here's So here's the fucking infamous piece of shit ending. Like, worse than I could have possibly imagined by reading the leaks. Just, holy shit. Basically, you find Abby, like, even uglier than you, than ever, if you can believe it. She's, like, all, she's kind of emaciated, but still with, like, swollen arms, despite starving and beaten and whatever. She's, like, tied to a pole. <sighs> Instead of just killing her right there, Ellie frees her and Lev. They go off to a boat by the shore. Ellie then decides, oh no, I still have to kill you to satisfy my revenge. They have a fair fight, quote unquote. Abby gets stabbed about a hundred fucking times. Again, maybe you could excuse it with Ludo narrative dissonance again. They still barely, barely does Ellie win, like almost choking her to death under the water, but lets her live. Fucking what? Lets her live after all this? Okay, and she has two of her fingers bitten off, by the way, by by Abby in the fight. Abby and Lev just sail away. Ellie returns to the house on the prairie. Dina's gone with the baby. She tries to play guitar, can't really do it with her two chopped off fingers, bitten off fingers. Has one last flashback of her being a cunt to Joel. And then she stops playing guitar and leaves the house. And that's the end. 
That's the fucking end of the game. This is what happens. This is what happens when you let these far leftist, regressive, liberal people make this game. It's just fucking misery. Pointless misery. What's the lesson? That humans are horrible and they do bad things to each other no matter what? Ooh, wow. What a great message. What a fucking great message. I really learned something. We all know this. Video games are escapism, okay? Even if you have faith in people or whatever, you're not going to want to see this. This is not going to change your mind and all of a sudden think, oh, wow, humans are horrible. But if you already thought humans were horrible, this isn't going to make you be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with this. This is great, yeah. No, you're going to be like, wow, that was really unsatisfying and sad and pointless, fucking pointless, because Ellie didn't even get revenge in the end. It's so fucking dumb. It was pain. How the fuck? Naughty Dog should not naughty dog will never recover from this they will not even though people on the internet have a short memory and if they release an, a new game that's actually good people will probably buy it they are dead to me they are dead to me i will never buy another one of their games period and you shouldn't either like maybe the only way they could redeem themselves in my eyes is if neil Druckmann is fired all these other people who were like cheering him on, encouraging him, are probably also fired. Sony gets their fucking shit together, stops being SJW, stops letting fucking the California HQ bully the Japanese HQ or whatever. Fucking, oh my god. It's just, it's, it's over, man. It's fucking over. Naughty Dog's gone, like I said. I told you this game would make the first game seem pointless. Fuck, man. It's just bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. What else is there to even say? I can't even... I can't even muster up enthusiasm enough to really, like, be funny, make some fucking jokes or some shit. No, I can't. This just made me miserable at the end. That's the truth. I'm fucking miserable now. And the only thing that's gonna cheer me up is fucking playing Spongebob. I'm gonna play Spongebob Alfred Bikini Bottom Remake right after this fucking video. Right after I edit it. Because fuck this, dude. I'd rather play these games for kids. At least it makes me fucking, like, have some fun. I love the game when I grew up with it. You know, it's gonna be much better than this shit. You know, if you don't like 3D platformers, that's fine or whatever. If you don't believe the Spongebob game is actually good, which it actually is, believe it or not. That's fine, but that's what I'm gonna do to fucking make up for this shit, okay? And you know... It, I'm, I put the footage throughout this video, but I was playing Jack and Daxter, the first one, while watching this video. Just to see, like, God, their games used to be so much better paced. Obviously, they were a different company back then, a much better company. But, God damn, Last of Us is slow. Jack and Daxter is just fun the whole time. Collect-a-thon platforming, it's great. Um... I don't, I think Jack 2 is kind of shitty in comparison, but Jack 3 fixes a lot of the problems with Jack 2, also a great game. Crash 2, one of my favorite games, and now Naughty Dog's a piece of shit, now they don't make any good games. It's over. It's done. I don't want to repeat myself too much from the last video, I've talked enough already. But, they're fucking, they're dead, man. They're fucking dead. You know, that's another game from this generation that's just a massive disappointment. At least this one I saw coming, you know, thanks to the leaks. If the leaks never came out, I would have been, you know, a bit suspicious, you know, and I honestly, I was never really that interested because I didn't think the first game needed a sequel, and the E3 trailer raised some red flags, but goddamn. All right, off to SpongeBob. Uh, I'll finish that Demon Souls video up next, probably, unless I just decide to make the SpongeBob video first, whatever. See you next time. <laughs>